Hey, Tom Donnie from Fort Dodge, Iowa. Talk to you today about a Saab crankshaft. I've been working on this. Uh, Bertil actually helped me a little bit with this concept too, but uh, a hybrid crankshaft. And all a hybrid crankshaft is, is a combination of a GT in the front and a standard T-weight in the rear. I've got on our website, uh, TomDonnieMotors.com, under tech tips, you'll see an ex uh, article on the hybrid crankshaft. This is the Excel spreadsheet that shows all 16 runs. And the thing that I want to point out here is this is one particular run, and it's one of the more dr dramatic ones. But regardless, we had a 3.5 horsepower gain, or 9%, running this hybrid crankshaft versus a uh, Monte Carlo or GT. The same kind of return on the torque. You really feel the torque when you drive these cars. That's where the big gain is, is in torque. You do have a crossover point of about 4,000 RPM. That crossover point is going to fluctuate based on your expansion chamber. So the more radical your chamber, the more this is going to move upstream with higher RPM. The more standard your chamber is, the more downstream it'll go. This was All these tests were done with a uh, Monte Carlo 2 uh, pipe standard set standard Monte Carlo GT setup obviously not a standard single engine or single carb setup so but there's the gains all these reports are on my website so you can take a look at them but you're talking about if you can get a you know a six or nine percent gain on a little engine like this drivability becomes becomes huge if you can do that type of an increase here's the actual crank what it looks like again you, you put a Monte Carlo GT weight up front and a standard T weight in the back. Same thing for number two, same thing for number three. The balance is, is still there because we're equal for all three of these little sections. So there is no balance issues. I've had a lot of people when I talked about doing this told me, oh, it's gonna shake and rattle and vibrate. It simply doesn't. I've got one in my 61 getaway car I drive. A phenomenal driving little car with that modification. It's really good, it's really neat. The whole concept behind it stems from the transfer ports on this Saab engine. We only have two. We got one in front, one in the rear. Most modern two-strokes have five to six transfer ports. So the Saab is a really antiquated design. Uh, back in the day to get around it, people tended to do what we called stuffing, where we'd fill the bottom of the crank with putty, or we'd fill the bottom of a piston. We'd find all kinds of ways to lower the low-end compression ratio. Today, the philosophy tends to be get more air up into the combustion chamber because that's where the magic happens anyway, right? So let's take and get more air flow through. Um, don't worry so much about low end compression. Let's get as much air as we can up top side and then work with that. And that's really the whole concept behind this crankshaft is a, is a Monte Carlo crank. If you look at this one here, it almost covers that rear inlet all the way. You've got these little notches here that are designed to help air flow, but you know, the front transfer has got so much room because it's cut away. We really don't have a problem there. The rear one is where we really get starved. And by using a Monte Carlo GT in the rear, you limit how much airflow you can get through that rear transfer port. And those results are backed up by the dyno test. Here's a, a T weight in there and you can see how obviously it's wide open when it's there. But even with it the weight all the way across, it's still it's a smaller diameter. Because again, the old days we would stuff, we'd make everything bigger in the bottom end. Stuffing's out today, today we go with more air in the top. This allows more air to get through in the, in the rear, you've got pretty good flow up front, and the result is pretty decent horsepower gain. And again, you, there is a trade-off, you're going to gain it in the drivable area from four to 4,000 RPMs, I think is where you can really expect to see great gains in this that are not going to be offset. So you'll have to do your own testing and your own research for yourself. But I know for the crankshafts I build for my cars from now on, I doubt I'll build another GT Monte Carlo with full circle cranks. I think they're all going to be built as a hybrid, 50% T-weight and 50% Monte Carlo GT. Plus the added benefit to that is you've just doubled your supply of Monte Carlo GT crankshafts and you've gained horsepower and torque. I mean, it's a win-win situation. The only situation I know where it doesn't work well is in my Bonneville application, unfortunately. This crank was tested in my Bonneville engine, and the crossover point on that is up over 6,000 RPMs. Um, but still, I lose, I lose a little bit of horsepower right at the very top. And in Bonneville, where you have no shifts, then I need all top-end speed. For a, a track, someone racing around curves or a rally, where your engine's constantly up and down, I would think the 50-50 would be ideal. I know driving it in my 61 is pretty phenomenal, the difference between what it was and how it is now with a hybrid crank. So 
do your own playing, do your own checking. Email me, tomsob at gmail.com if you got questions. Be glad to talk and uh, get on uh, my website, tomdonnymotors.com. Take a look at the test results under Tech Tips and uh, see what you think. This is Tom Donnie from Fort Dodge, Iowa, signing off.